So after you implemented this, interaction with the user interface will actually become pretty cool. So you set a start node, you set an end node, and very quickly it will come up with the set of all visited nodes, and the user interface will react pretty quickly. Also, it's now more fun to draw some obstacles and have a look at what happens, or to make a really complex maze. And then watch how the algorithm finds a solution. Now since there's a hole, it goes through there, so let's fix that. And there are holes too. And it may now block this path. It may also block this path. But then it is unable to reach the solution. But remember, pressing the middle or right button, you can still punch holes into the entire structure and have a look at how this affects the overall search behavior. So that is pretty cool, but there is one thing which you'll have probably missed all the time. Where is the actual path from the start to the goal? We are interested in the path. So let us add this next. Now how do we get the path from the start to the goal? Now remember at a certain point in the execution of the algorithm, we obtained this set of visited nodes, which is connected by direct edges to those nodes which are part of our front. So we search for the node with minimum cost, and say we get this one, and so we enter this node into the set of visited nodes, and we look for its neighbors and insert them into our front. Now let's have a look at front. So there are some elements in front, and we have this node, say this is A, B and C. And so we have the A node with a certain cost. We remove that from front and we insert the other nodes B and C. So at the very moment we take out this node and we insert those nodes, we know that we actually came from A when we inserted B. So we can remember this here, we came from A and also here we came from A. Now also when we inserted A of course we had some predecessor and so on, so that when I finally reach the goal, then it's easy to reconstruct the path from the goal to the start. And so the only thing I'll have to do is, after I reconstruct this path, I have to reverse it to get the final path from start to the goal. Now there's still one thing we have to solve, namely we keep this previous element in the records that we have in our front. However, in the end, the front may be empty. If we processed all nodes, then finally there will be no elements remaining in front. So all this information regarding the previous node is lost. And so by the very moment we add a node to our visited set, we pick it from front, we have to record this relationship that D is the predecessor of A in some extra data structure. So we will not only have to modify our visited as we did previously, but we will also need a second array, which I will call came from. And so in the case where we add A, I will have to say we came from D. Right, and this came from data structure later allows us to go from the goal to the start by just calling came from, came from, came from repeatedly. So now let's see how we have to modify our current code. And as usual, there is only quite minimal changes necessary in our code. So the first change is here. Now each tuple in our front now needs to consist of three components, namely the cost, the node and the previous node, the node we came from. However, the start node itself doesn't have a previous node and so you should add none as the third component of this tuple so that later when we unwind the path backwards, we know that this is the end of the path. So the second change is here, and I already wrote that down for you. We use this data structure came from, and in this case we don't use an array, but rather we use a Python dictionary which makes the implementation very easy. So just leave this line as is. Here you will also have to add this previous, because the element which you 
pop from the heap now contains three components, the cost, the position and the previous node. So leave this line as is. And here you will have to add a line where you record that you came from previous when you entered pass into the set of visited nodes. And so we're almost done. Down here, of course, we'll have to do another modification because when you push a new tuple to the heap, you have to make sure, of course, that this tuple also has three components, namely the cost, the new position, and the previous position. Well, the previous position now is pass, and the new position is new pass. So that's all there is to do, and I added here some extra code, which you'll have to include as is, and do remember to also include this return, because now it also returns the path. So if you don't include this line, the path will not show up in the graphical user interface. Now how is the path reconstructed? First the path is set to the empty path. And then if the position that we obtained is equal to the goal, this means if we have quit our loop up here, then we unwind the path. Now if we did not quit the loop here, then we repeated the loop until no elements in front were left and so we didn't reach the goal and in that case we do not execute this part and the path simply is the empty path. But if we hit the goal then we do this loop where we just go backwards. We append the current position and we use the came from dictionary to get the previous position and we do this until position is none in which case we ended up in the start node and then in the end we reverse the path which is not strictly necessary for the visualization, but just to make it complete. So, not very much to do here. Some minor additions here and there. And so go ahead and program this.